Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines from Minister Narendra Modi says new India's policies and strategies have opened doors for new opportunities. Covid cases rise by 30% in the country over 10,000 new cases reported today. New Delhi asserts Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh are integral and inalienable parts of India and holding G20 meetings there is natural. India's merchandise registers highest ever annual exports of 447.46 billion dollars in the last financial year. Indian women wrestlers back seven medals to finish third at the Asian Wrestling Championship in Astana, Kazakhstan. And in IPL cricket match between Punjab Kings and Gujarat Titans underway in Mohali. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said today's new India is moving with policies and strategies that have opened the doors for new opportunities. He said the third decade of the 21st century is witnessing opportunities of employment and self-employment in India that were unimaginable earlier. The Prime Minister was speaking after distributing appointment letters to around 71,000 new recruits under the National Rozgar Mela through video conference. 2014 के बाद से भारत ने प्रोएक्टिव अप्रोच अपनाई है इसका नतीजा यह हुआ है कि 21वीं सदी का यह तीसरा दशक रोजगार और स्वरोजगार के वो अवसर पैदा कर रहा है जिनकी पहले कल्पना भी नहीं की जा सकती थी The Prime Minister said the government is committed to giving the right opportunities to the talent and energy of youth to fulfill the vision of a developed India. He stressed that India is the fastest growing economy and the world is seeing India as a bright spot. Aaj Bharat duniya ki sabse tej rafsar se aage badhne wali arthavyavastha hai. Puri duniya covid ke baad mandi se jhooj rahi hai. ज्यादातर देशों की अर्थव्यवस्था लगातार गिरती चली जा रही है लेकिन इन सबके बीच भारत को दुनिया एक ब्राइट स्पॉट के तौर पर देख रही है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान एम्स टू क्रिएट क्रोर्स ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज फ्रॉम विलेजेस टू सिटीज He said that after 2014 India adopted a proactive approach as opposed to the reactive stance of earlier times giving examples of startups and Indian youths enthusiasm the prime minister said that startups have created more than 40 lakh direct or indirect jobs the prime minister urged the new appointees to contribute to the development of the country while the nation moves ahead with the goal of becoming a developed India by 2047 In Maharashtra the Central Railway distributed a total of 2532 appointment letters to candidates at different events organized at Mumbai, Pune and Nagpur. Union Minister for Micro Small and Medium Enterprises Narayan Rane distributed appointment letters at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus in Mumbai. In Jammu and Kashmir Union Minister of State for Power and Heavy Industries Krishan Pal distributed appointment letters to newly recruited youth at convention center Jammu today in Jharkhand youngsters recruited in railways universities postal defense CRPF banks and other departments were offered appointment letters during the fourth tranche of Rozgar Mela held in Ranchi today Union Minister of Tribal Affairs Arjun Munda handed over appointment letters to new recruits In Andhra Pradesh Union Minister of State for Finance Pankaj Chaudhary handed over appointment letters to new recruits at the 4th Rozgar Mela in Vijayawada. India today recorded 10158 new covid cases 30% more than yesterday the active cases in the country have now gone up to 44998 according to data by the Union Health Ministry. The infection count today reported a sharp jump from yesterday's 7830 cases according to the health ministry the nationwide covid-19 recovery rate has been recorded at 98.71% the ministry said the xbb.1.16 subvariant of omicron which is driving the latest surge is not a cause of worry and vaccines are effective against it 
A number of Asian nations are witnessing a surge in COVID-19 infections as the region treats the virus as endemic, with the fresh wave exerting limited pressure on healthcare systems. Singapore's infections almost doubled in the final week of March to the highest this year, data from the Ministry of Health showed. However, Indonesia's daily caseload is near a four-month high and Vietnam is ramping up virus prevention measures. Cases in the Philippines have plateaued since February and there was just a single COVID death in March. The External Affairs Ministry has reiterated that Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are an integral and inalienable part of India and holding G20 meetings in these places are quite natural for the country. Responding to Pakistan's criticism over India's move to host G20 meetings in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi said these G20 events and meetings are being held across the country. ये जो G20 के इवेंट्स हो रहे हैं ये जो मीटिंग्स हो रही हैं ये भारत के हर क्षेत्र में हो रही हैं और जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में और लद्दाख में करना बहुत नेचुरल है क्योंकि ये जगह हम हमेशा से भारत के भिन्न और अविभाज्य अंग मानते हैं और हमारे हैं इसीलिए हर क्षेत्र में कर रहे हैं Reacting on Khalistani violence in London against the Indian mission, Mr. Bakhti said India wanted to see action on the ground, expressing concern over the violence near Kanbalu Township in the Sangaing region of Myanmar. Mr. Bakhti said India calls for cessation of violence by all sides and a peaceful resolution of all issues. Home and Cooperation Minister Amit Shah today chaired a review meeting in New Delhi on the security situation in Jammu and Kashmir. During the meeting, Mr. Shah reviewed the functioning of the security grid and all security-related aspects. He reiterated the government's unflinching resolve towards the policy of zero tolerance against terrorism. He also reviewed the area domination plan, zero terror plan, law and order situation, and matters related to unlawful activities prevention act. The Home Minister also reviewed the preparations for the G20 meeting scheduled to be held in Srinagar next month. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. All India Radio is presenting vignettes of select quotes of the Prime Minister from Man Ki Baat as the program completes its 100th episode this month. Today, in the 60th episode of this special program, let's listen to the excerpts in which the Prime Minister spoke about giving a fillip to local products. People, voice and direct dialogue. That's your and our Man Ki Baat. Yes. This is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. Today, in the 60th episode of this special program, let's listen to the excerpts in which the Prime Minister spoke about giving a fillip to local products. The crux of the Swadeshi movement was about patronizing these local products and the use of these to the maximum in our own lives. The message that the Prime Minister gave in the Monkey Bat program, broadcast on 29th December 2019, was to buy and use local products. Today, I have a question again. Do we can give the products to the local products? Can we give them to our own products? क्या हम लोकल प्रोडक्ट्स को अपनी प्रतिष्ठा और शान से जोड़ सकते हैं क्या हम इस भावना के साथ अपने साथी देशवासियों के लिए समृद्धि लाने का माध्यम बन सकते हैं साथियों महात्मा गांधी ने स्वदेशी की इस भावना को एक ऐसे दीपक के रूप में देखा जो लाखों लोगों के जीवन को रोशन करता हो Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways Nitin Gadkari today said it is important to promote public transport in the country as about 40% of the total air pollution in India is due to road traffic. Addressing the biennial international conference on ports, shipping and logistics in Mumbai today, Mr. Gadkari said the BJP-led central government accords the highest priority to ecology and environment and is working on various projects on a war footing to curb pollution. 
A suited Sessions Court today reserved its verdict in the appeal filed by Congress leader Rahul Gandhi seeking a stay on his conviction in the criminal defamation case against him. The court will pronounce the order on the 20th of this month. Mr. Gandhi has been jailed for two years by the Metropolitan Magistrate Court in Surat on March the 23rd over his remarks on Modi's surname. President Draupadi Murmu and Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar has, have greeted fellow citizens on the occasion of Vaisakhi, Meshadi, Vaisakhdi, Puttandar, Vishu, Navaborsho and Bohag Bihu. In a message, the President said these farmers' festivals celebrated in different parts of the country present a glimpse of India's rich cultural heritage and diversity. In his message, the Vice President said these festivals are an integral part of India's diverse culture and traditions, symbolizing the spirit of unity, harmony and brotherhood. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that Tamil culture has played an important role in nation building. He said there is so much in Tamil culture that has shaped India as a nation. He was addressing the gathering on the occasion of Tamil New Year celebrations at the residence of Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Dr. L. Murugan, in New Delhi today, highlighting the role of Tamil people, culture and literature in nation building. Mr. Modi said Tamil is the world's oldest language and its literature is widely respected. From Chennai to California, from Madurai to Melbourne, from Coimbatore to Cape Town, from Salem to Singapore, you will find Tamil people who have carried with them their culture and tradition. Be it Pongal or Putandu, they are marked all over the world. Tamil is the world's oldest language. Every Indian is proud of this. President Draupadi Murmu has greeted fellow citizens on the eve of the birthday of architect of Indian constitution, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. In a message today, the president said a symbol of knowledge and a prodigy. Dr. Ambedkar worked untiringly, even in adverse circumstances, as an educationist, legal expert, economist, politician and social reformer and spread knowledge for the welfare of the nation. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Yatra Bharat Gaurav tourist train will be flagged off tomorrow from New Delhi on the occasion of the birth anniversary of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. Under the Dekho Apna Desh initiative, the train will cover some of the prominent sites associated with the life of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. The country's overall exports are projected to scale new heights in the financial year 2022-23, registering a growth of 13.84% over the financial year 2021-22. It is estimated to achieve 770.18 billion US dollars worth of exports in the last financial year despite the global headwinds and steady domestic demand. India's overall export was over 676 billion US dollars in the fiscal year 2021-22. Indian women wrestlers have bagged seven medals, including two silver and five bronze in Asian Wrestling Championships at Astana in Kazakhstan and finished third in women's team's ranking. In the last edition, India had won five medals and settled at the fourth spot. Antim Panghal won silver in the 53-kilogram category. Nishadaya also claimed silver in the 68-kilogram category. Anshu Malik, Sona Malik, Manisha and Ritika backed bronze medals. Meanwhile, Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has lauded the women wrestlers for their performance in the ongoing Asian Wrestling Championship 2023. In IPL cricket, Punjab Kings were 136 for 5 in 18 overs against Gujarat Titans at Mohali when reports last came in. Earlier, the Titans won the toss and elected to field. Doordarshan will broadcast a two-part documentary named Dharohar Bharat Ki, Punaruthan Ki Kahani, showcasing achievements of the government. In the last few years, the first episode of the documentary will be aired tomorrow and the second will be broadcast day after tomorrow at 8 p.m. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says new India's policies and strategies have opened doors for new opportunities. COVID cases rise by 30% in the country, over 10,000 new cases reported today. New Delhi asserts Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh are integral and inalienable parts of India and holding G20 meetings there is natural. India's merchandise registers highest ever annual exports of $447.46 billion in the last financial year. 
injured women wrestlers back seven medals to finish third at the Asian Wrestling Championship in Astana, Kazakhstan and an IPL cricket match between Punjab Kings and Gujarat Titans underway in Mohali. That is all in the news at 9. Good night.